Hey developers, today we're gonna look at five interview questions that every new developer should know about. So these five questions are pretty common. I think everyone should know about them. So we'll take a look at each of them and I'll explain the answers as well. Hey, and if you're new to the channel, my name is Eric. I'm a software developer. I'm a full stack developer for over 10 years. I have a lot of experience. So make sure if you like this channel, click that subscribe button. I do a lot of videos on front end development, Vue.js and a lot of other things. And before we begin, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Progress. Now, if you don't know who Progress is, they're behind Kendo UI, they created NativeScript, they do a lot of stuff in the mobile development landscape, and they created this ebook. It's 100% free. In the description below, make sure you click on the link. You can put your email address in and get this ebook, and it has everything about the mobile development landscape. It's actually a pretty interesting read. It talks about mobile development in the early days and what it's like to create mobile apps today. So make sure you click on that link in the description and you can download this free ebook and let's begin. So when you're a new developer and you're trying to find a job, you'll go on a lot of interviews and you'll find out there's quite a few questions out there that people can ask you. In fact, new developers have a lot of studying to do because there is a lot of things you got to learn to be able to land that first job. But what I found that there are some common questions that I hear quite often and these things really you should know about. So I'm going to talk about five of them in no particular order. So the first one is if you're a new developer and you're interviewing for a position that uses Vue.js, React, Angular, Ember, you really should know and understand the lifecycle hooks of each one of those frameworks and libraries. And if you don't know, these lifecycle hooks are kind of the basics of how the app loads and when things happen at different places. So you can actually have these hooks inside your apps and when different components load, you can have different things occur. So this is like really low hanging fruit. So if you go in an interview for let's say Vue and they ask you this question, you should be able to come up with some answers. So for example, for Vue.js, you may talk about the create or before create or the mounted hooks. And you might talk about how the mounted hook is great for when you're trying to insert something into the DOM. In React, you might be talking about component did mount, that might be one of them. Or in Angular, you might talk about the ng on init. And of course, you'd wanna talk about the destroy hooks, so that way, if there's any events in place that you can unbind them. So really try to understand the basics of the framework before you get into the interview, because you will be asked some simple and easy questions like that. And also try to get an idea of why you use that tool. So if you're going in a React chopped, and they might ask you some basic questions about React, but they might even ask you, why should we use React? What is it? So make sure you're able to answer those questions. For any front end job, you'll probably get some questions on CSS. So you wanna take some time and learn some of the basics of CSS. Of course, you'll probably get some questions on how to do selectors, like class selectors, ID selectors, but you'll be taught, they'll probably ask you questions about the nth element selector or the first hyphen child selector, or you might even be asked about the um, different types of selectors and how you can combine them to find the, each element. So make sure you spend some time and just play around with CSS sele selectors until you understand it. There's also a lot of gotchas with CSS. Uh, one particular one that I see a lot is the CSS box sizing border box, which is a way to account for any border and padding in, the, in values that you specify in the elements width and height. So you might wanna just make sure you understand about that. You can also get some questions on display none display hidden, floats. Those are all common questions that you'll see on CSS. So make sure you're able to, to talk about those and understand them. On the JavaScript side, you might get some questions on promises. So a promise is an object that may produce a value uh, sometime in the future. So essentially you have three states for a promise. They can be fulfilled, rejected, or pending. You may get into an interview and if you don't know promises, they may ask you some other questions about that. You might wanna know about async and await or callbacks, or you may even talk about uh, observables if you're using something like RxJS. So make sure that you do a little bit of research on basics of what promises are. They're super common and a lot of code bases use them. And if not, be able to talk intelligently about callbacks, async, await, and things like that. Another really common interview question is scoping. So especially for new developers, trying to make sure you understand the differences between var, const, and let. That var has a global scope or a function scope, depending on where it is. Let and const have block scoping. So anytime you see that little squirrely, squirrely brackets, curly brackets, it's inside there. 
And then with const, it's actually, some people think it's immutable. It actually can be changed. You can't reassign const, but you can change the properties with inside them. So make sure you're able to talk intelligently about all three of those. Those are really common interview questions. A couple other ones I'm not getting into, but you might be asked about closures. You may be asked about um, inheritance, pro prototypical inheritance versus ES6 classes. Currying and hoisting are all common questions that you see on the JavaScript guide, especially for new developers. Last but not least, you'll probably be asked some interview questions that you have to get up on the whiteboard for. So these questions, usually for new developers, aren't too difficult. Although if you're interviewing at like Apple or Google or Amazon, expect to, to study your, your data algorithms. But most shops that aren't that big will probably ask you things like, how do you reverse a string? Can you do a palindrome? Uh, Fibonacci sequence, FizzBuzz, things like that. So they're not super difficult, but you should be able to do them on the fly without a compiler just on the whiteboard and be able to explain your process and, and your thought process and how it works. So that's it for my list of five front end interview questions that all new front end developers should know about. So have you guys seen any of these questions in interviews? I'd love to know, put your comment and question below. I've also definitely seen on senior level or higher level developer interviews where they go way into depth in something like this. You may get questions on network connectivity. You may have to talk about RESTful interfaces or what REST is, the, all the HTTP verbs. You may have to actually diagram how you would structure a whole application and the back end. So it can definitely get extremely complicated and difficult, but just keep in mind that most interviewers, especially for smaller companies, they're probably Googling their questions. So you may wanna just spend like 10, 15 minutes Googling the common interview questions for the types of technologies they're using just so you can have a better idea how to answer them. You would, it's actually quite common that some of these companies don't spend a ton of time uh, actually preparing for interviews. So make sure you, you just spend some time Googling and, and practicing those interview questions. And just realize that it's okay if you don't know the answer to one of these questions. The worst thing to do is actually to make it up. You can kind of preface this by saying, you know, I think this is what it is, but if you're completely lost, it's okay to say, I don't know. And the interviewer will move on and ask you a different question. Usually the interview, that you're doing, they're trying to find like what your limits are. So eventually you'll probably come to, come to a question that you don't know and it's okay to say no or I don't know uh, rather than having them, rather than saying, uh, making up some answer or just trying to bullshit them because they'll know that you're not, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. So never do that. And also one more quick tip that's not on this list. If you haven't a resume, only put on technologies that you can talk about. I've been on interviews where someone has put a technology on there, but they haven't used it in years and years. Um, I understand that the HR world out there, there's keyword matchers and that if they don't see this regular, this keyword on there, then you just get disqualified. But I would uh, be careful about what keywords you put on your resumes. Try to make sure that you can talk intelligently about any one of them you put on there. So that's it, that's all I got. So let me know in the description what you think. If you guys like this type of video, make sure you click that like button and subscribe. Make sure you click that bell button and uh, share it with your friends. And if you guys really like this, I'll do a couple more like this. I have tons and tons of interview questions. I've given interviews, I've received interviews. I can make a few more videos like this. So let me know if you like it, thanks.